to me. I can bless you more when you just thank me than when you're coming to me asking me. It's like a children that, no, 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 don't go there. But sometimes we can be like we're not satisfied. God bless us today. He do this. He do this. And so, but it's like, when is my people going to really just praise me for who I am? Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the much for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Be being filled with the Spirit. Now, when we're filled with the Spirit, he tells us how, and he, t he can show us some of the results of the tune. Now look here. He says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, this is a form of worship in the Lord, right? Giving thanks always for all things. This is a thankful heart, right? And, and the Father, uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another. You see that? And so there's, there's three, three areas that a relationships, a peaceful relationships, is very important. He mentioned the, the marriage, the family, and work. Three areas where peaceful relationships is very important. So it takes being constantly filled with the Spirit. You, you can't do this because you just want to, right? It takes more than willpower. This is not willpower we're talking about. This is talking about Holy Ghost power. It takes Holy Ghost to make a man live right. It takes Holy Ghost for a woman to forgive. Well, you hear you know what I'm saying? It takes the Spirit of God moving upon and influencing a heart to cause us to live the way God wants us to live. So Now, I've been filled with the Spirit. But I'm a, I'm, I, I, I had an experience this week that I got mad. I mean, mad, mad. But the Lord sure made me see some things. He made me see. It's like, he said, you have to walk in this spirit. Be filled. And there are some things, when you're filled with the spirit, never bother you at all. Getting quiet in here. But now if you are not, if I'm not filled with the Spirit, a whole lot of things will bother me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I could have had the experience first. I could have had the experience, baptized, and, and still speak in tongues. But I may not necessarily be filled to overflowing because maybe I'm not worshiping God constantly. Maybe I'm not really grateful to God. Or, or maybe I'm not submitting to others as I should. Or, or you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but whatever it is, uh, maybe my prayer time, whatever the maybes be. But what I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is this here. I might not be filled to overflowing. But you can tell when a person is filled to overflowing, man, it doesn't take but a few seconds you talk to them boy there and they're thanking the Lord a few seconds just you don't have to talk but a few seconds and they're filled to overflowing rejoicing and giving thanks to the Lord you know and, and and but what happens is there's an alertness and there's a strength from the spirit and there's a provision by God the spirit that we won't have if we don't be filled with the spirit it's okay to tell people I've been filled uh, I got filled and I spoke in tongues years ago but what is what is it like now am I filled to overflowing um, am I happy in God am I great 
thankful to the Lord can I sing with a joyful heart are you hear what I'm saying then if I if I but because the because the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy and the Holy Ghost. That's an evidence of my being filled to overflowing. You know what I'm saying? Am I happy in God? Am I joyful in the midst of the things that I'm going through? You see, so, so God said at this hour, it's really, really, really critical that his people, those that have been filled once, um, not only to just refer back to the experience, but to walk in it, to walk in the spirit now. And that's when the supernatural, you're going to see more of the supernatural and people are going to be able to identify you more now. As children of God, because by this shall all men know you're mine, you're my disciples. So it's important. So I want you to think with me. If you need to be refilled with the Spirit, and in the days of old, they, they didn't just stop with just one experience. Remember when they faced some opposition, they all came together. And they began to pray, and they prayed, God, grant to us boldness. In other words, boy, these people are threatening us, so we need some boldness. And they got ready to pray, and then the Bible said the Holy Spirit came again, and they were all filled. The place was shaken, and they were all filled again. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's give God some praise. We need it. When we come together, we start worshiping God, if we really let go, and let God, then God can heal us right where we're standing. God can heal those conditions in our bodies. And you see, God works miracles when we praise him. And so, you, have you seen how he's been laboring to get us to praise him? I mean, he's literally been laboring to get us to praise him because God knows that in that atmosphere, the devil is stifled. He is stifled. He cannot do what he want to do in your life and my life. So, uh, it's so now, so he wants us to be filled. So we want us uh, uh, to be filled so that we can walk with God. And uh, let, me, let me give you another scripture here. What he's saying. Look at the Colossians chapter 1 right fast. Colossians chapter 1 says, Verse 9, for this cause, I, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, spiritual insight, that so that ye might walk worthy of the Lord to all please. I can't please him if I don't know how to please him, right? If I don't know what he's requiring of me, right? And so then he says... Uh, uh, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, I want to focus it on verse 11. Strengthened with all might. All right. Strengthen and might both come from a Greek word uh, that deals, uh, a, a Greek word, a power, which means inherent ability. You know that's Holy Ghost, right? Then he said, unto all patience, no, I'm sorry, go back, strengthen and, and with all might. Then he said, according to his glorious power. That power deals with manifested strength. All right? So in other words, what I can be, he said, there's an inherent strength that comes by the Holy Spirit. He strengthens us on the inner, in, in our inner being. And then with, with that strength, we now, it manifests in patience. Or being able to go through a situation there and obstacles without being moved. Now, the Holy Ghost is doing this, right? Because he's enabled us with the strength. So Paul prayed this prayer that they would be strengthened with might, according to the power, to all patience. And uh, let's see what does it say. Long-suffering with joyfulness, doing what? Giving thanks. And this is what I'm saying. And, and, and I, I, I know the Lord really dealing with me about this year. Uh, let me jump down and I'll come back up a minute. But... Be thankful. Sometime, you know, I can put these requests before the Lord. Tomorrow I'm putting another request. The next day I'm putting another one. But I hadn't had much time to thank him. I'm putting some mess before him Thursday and Friday and so on. And before you know it, 
I put like 1% a little time to thank him for what he's doing, what he is to me. And you know what I'm saying? So if, when, you, when you measure it, maybe he's just like he's saying, but why don't you just be thankful to me? I can bless you more when you just thank me than when you're coming to me asking me. It's like a children that, no, 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 don't go there. Larry. But sometimes we can be like we're not satisfied. God bless us today. He do this. He do this. And so, it's like, when is my people going to really just praise me for who I am? Can somebody stop? Let's just love them a little bit. Come on, let's just praise them a little bit. God is good. God is so good. God is so good. He, he, he got me with that. He did. He really did. But, but with all sincerity and saints, the Lord is the greatest thing that has ever happened to my life. I mean the greatest thing. He is the greatest thing. You say, well, you, you must don't have no problem. Yeah, I do, I do. But I have never found anybody to treat me like God. Never have I ever found anybody that can understand my woes, that can have compassion on my ignorance. Ah. Hallelujah. And when I'm deserving something else, he has compassion on me. Because he doesn't judge after the flesh. He knows my frame. He understands my hurts and wounds. And so when he, when he, when he disciplines me, he knows he does it. Oh my God, it's different. You know, our fathers whipped us because they, what they saw they didn't like. And they needed to stop us so we wouldn't continue to do it. And, and we gave him reverence, right? But God, but God, he has a higher purpose for us but I could never deny him he's been too good he did for me things that I could never do for myself he loved me when I didn't love my own self how can I how can I hallelujah and so God said I want is people to, to remain filled. So it's, it's when, you, when you're filled, when you're filled with God's Spirit, you sing, you rejoice, you give thanks, you're submissive. Is that a bad word? When you're filled with God, when you're filled with God. You, now remember the scripture says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge from on high? Let him show, this is James chapter 3, out of a good conduct. His works were meekness of wisdom. And then he talks about the wisdom that's devilish. And then he talks about the wisdom that comes from on high. The wisdom that comes from on high, he said, is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be treated or easy to yield or comply, full of mercy. So what am I saying in the second thing? The second thing he mentioned, a lot of us really really want to please God or really want to manifest the the power or the, the life conduct that God wants us to but we're trying it in our own strength and this is why it doesn't work and so God said if you just be filled with my spirit you'll get the fruits because of the Spirit himself will produce the fruit. Right? And so this is, I just want to keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So this is the second thing. The third thing is this. He said, the need, now I'm, I'm just foregoing some of these scriptures here. The need for healing of the sick and disease. Jesus commissioned his followers to do as he did. And uh, so that's, now this is all of us now, right? He's commissioned his followers to do as he did. It's not just for a few select people, but it's for all of us. Now, I'm going to take you through a few scriptures right fast. I'm not going to keep you long. Let's look at 
uh, Luke chapter 9. Luke 9. If you'll turn there, I'll, I'll, I'll read briefly with you. Verse 1 says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. This is what he did. Now he deputized them, so he empowered them. Look at chapter 10. This is when God commissions his people. He, he gives us, enables us. Chapter 10 of Luke, verse 9 Verse 8 says, Into whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein. Right? And say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. See, the, the, the kingdom manifests, and when the kingdom power manifests, you'll see healings and deliverances. And so, you and I are commissioned to do that. Let's look at verse number 17. And the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Why? Because Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Satan has already been dealt with, right? Amen. So, turn to Mark now. I'm sharing with you what he's, uh, the need for the sick to be healed. And he commissions his followers to do what he did. And that, that includes us. Mark 16 says... Mark 16. All right, verse 15. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and... They shall recover. This is, a, this is a fact, right? Okay, now, turn to Acts chapter 6. I've got a couple other scriptures, and then we're moving on from that point here. Acts chapter 6. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles. Among the people. Turn to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip said. Spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. One clean spirit crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city James gives instructions to the church if there is any sick among you let them call for the elders of the church let them pray over them anointing them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he's committed any sin, the Lord will forgive them, right? And the Lord will raise them up. All right. Everybody see that God made it clear in his commandment, in his word, that he wants us healed from sickness and disease. Now, we can be healed. You don't have to uh, go through the changes of trying to qualify yourself, but what we do have to do is believe. We believe the word. Let's take the word for what it means, what it says, just, just literal. If God says with sick, it can be healed, then let's just say, well, the sick can be healed because that's the word. It can't be. It's, it's true. And uh, so we don't want to add nothing to that. And finally, the last one is this, the need to forgive. A forgiving attitude of the heart, Matthew 18 Matthew 18, Matthew 18, verse 21 and 22. Verse 21 says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him 
to the seventh time? After seven times, do I knock him out? <laughs> Jesus said to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. What he was really saying is, I want you to have a, just a spirit of forgiveness. No matter how often you hurt, I want you to forgive people. And he said, I'll heal you. I'll make you whole. No matter what they do, I can heal you. And I'll make you whole. And my love will manifest in your life. And you'll become what I have been desiring for my body to become vessels of honor. Let's practice forgiveness. And sometimes we may not even know exactly uh, how people have affected us, you know. And let me, let me share this here and then bring this to conclusion. Forgiveness is a change of feelings and attitude regarding an offense. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that helps you go on with life. Forgiveness can lead to feelings of understanding and empathy and compassion for one who hurts you. Forgiveness brings with it plenty of health benefits. It decreases anxieties and stress, lowers blood pressure, strengthens immune and heart health. Forgiveness can expand physical fitness. Forgiveness can free us from stagnation. Forgiveness is necessary in order to heal. Forgiveness is an essential component of successful romantic relationships. Forgiveness can lead to emotional and unforgiveness can lead to emotional and sexual distance. Can put people, make people distance themselves. Unforgiveness, but forgiveness can restore relationships. Forgiveness can make us physically fit. Forgiveness can loose us from a state of stagnation where we can't, we feel stuck. Forgiveness will loose us from that. Forgiveness will cause innovative and creative uh, things in our lives. This, the, the, I think all of us have a certain amount of creativity and innovation, but sometimes unforgiveness will, will, will stifle it. Well, it could be fear, and it won't allow a person to be what God has really called them to be. And so forgiveness can just simply loose a person from that stagnation and cause those people to begin to blossom and do things like they've never, ever thought possible. God has designed and ordained forgiveness for us. Uh, and you see, the whole gospel is, the, prim the, the premise is, the foundation of it is based on forgiveness, right? We, we couldn't be here without forgiveness. If God had not forgiven us of our sin, we were, we were worthy of death. God will help us when we desire and purpose in our heart to forgive. I don't know about you, but I had to talk to the Lord just recently here. And the Lord was telling me, and I was, I was saying, God, okay, you said heal the sick and so on, and da 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 And then he said, well, forgiveness, so many times forgiveness is very, is very important for people before I can heal them. Because those things block. They block God's flow. They block God's power. And so it's not that God is harp, harping on somebody. Sometimes a person may feel like God, he's just harping on me. God, I'm tired. I heard it before. But God is saying, I want to preserve your life. I want to preserve your health. I want to, I want to uh, cause your destiny to be fulfilled. I, I, I want you uh, to, 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 to fulfill all that I have for you. I'm not picking on you. I know what's best for you. Because I'm your heavenly father. And my desires are all pure. Hallelujah. He doesn't have no ill motives. You know how, how we can have some ill motives sometimes. But not God. Uh -uh. God's not like that. He's genuine to the core. And when he says I want you to forgive. That means he doesn't assess everything. And he knows how that thing is hindering our lives. But I want you to know today saints. I've been there. I've been there. 
And that state is not pleasant. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it, it's hard. You, you, I remember one time he was telling me about, you know, I, I got into the presence of the Lord. I'm ready to God. Okay, God, just whoever, whoever. And I got there, and then all of a sudden, uh, God, uh, God pointed someone that had hurt me. And then I found myself arguing, reasoning with God, justifying my anger. And I was like, oh, my God. That's evident that I needed some help. Isn't that right? So what am I saying? I put myself here to tell you, as your leader, that God deals with me. He doesn't have favorites. He loves us all. He loves us all. And when I'm wrong, he doesn't waste time because I'm always in his presence. He doesn't waste time. He's always talking to me. And God... And I, I really appreciate him being that way. I really, really, really appreciate God for the way he is. Because I never had to worry about God playing favors. I never had to worry about God whenever he's correcting me or whenever he's correcting you. He's not playing games. He's not playing favorite. He loves us with an everlasting love. And he knows what's best for us. I don't know about you. But my heart is ready to forgive. I don't care who and what, how long it's been, how many years back. Could have been 20, 30, 40 years. Could have been something buried so low until I dare not even tamper with it. But it's down in there causing some hypertension, causing this, causing this to happen, and causing us. But God says, I want to heal my people. My kingdom has come. See, and, and what God is doing is, you know, sin brought these things, right? And so God is wanting to heal us from the effects of sin. Yeah. Isn't that right? Sin has done its damage. It causes uh, 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 distorted perceptions. It's caused uh, uh, irrational thinking. It's caused uh, distorted images of God or concepts of God. It's, it's put a whole lot of the strongholds coming out of line. And so God is simply saying, I want to heal the effects of sin. Because you're blessed now. You're not cursed. You're blessed. And because you're blessed, I want you to receive the full benefits of being blessed. A seed of Abraham, right? What a good God thinks. So I want you to bow your heads with me. And I want you to just be real to yourself and God. Don't worry about what people might think. You can't get anything like that. Don't worry about what people might think about you. It's what God knows about you that's important. And he's accepted us. Isn't that right? He's accepted us. I saw your